My name is Ramsey, and welcome back to Australia. Six-sided oracles. All right, now, personally, as an off-screen player, I know where my heart resides, and my heart resides in sticking with the very first thing until I master it and then moving on. However, I also recognize the, the way in which I would off-screen, you know, uh, engage with the game might not necessarily be the best on-screen experience of engaging with the game, so I will move over to the second character here. However, if I didn't win with the first character, and I understand the second character less, just allow me to be a little bad at this character. Just allow me to be quite bad at this. Allow me to be awful at this character. <laughs> allow me to restart mid-episode. It might happen. I'm just preparing you for the possibility before I get into... Solarius, the Tidehammer. Character complexity of two. Their profession is a warrior. Their Australium is the Eridanian Anchor. Their weapon. Their planet is Eridanus. Eridanus? Solarius. One of the bravest warriors of Eridanus was trained for warfare against corruption. Always ready for a fight and with a joke right at the tip of his fin, he was chosen as the Eridanian anchor by, rather, the Eridanian anchor to take on the Australian mission. Prepared with unusual physical endurance, Solarius deals massive amounts of purification and strengthens himself through pain. All right. I, you know what, that doesn't give me anything, it does give me a little about the mechanics of the character, but it doesn't give me a huge amount. However, I'm a lot more on board, having just read that description of them. The idea of a character who's kind of like a berserker, but also quick with a joke, and to light up your smoke, is... I like it! I'm on board! Maybe I should look at our base deck before we move in. So, we have, uh... A minor shield, which we've seen before, minor shield, we've seen before, another minor shield, which we've seen before, minor reroll, which we've seen before, all of those on Mooney. Shark Blow, however, is starter only for Solarius, and it has enemy purification and player corruption at the same time. Oh, okay, so we're going to be activating our virtues a lot. Got it. Oh, it's just uh, three more copies of Shark Blow. <laughs> all right, let's go then. Uh, so then we should probably check out our virtues. So our always available virtue once per turn is the area purify. We allow ourselves to deal two purification to all targets. This allows us to damage the enemy and heal ourselves at the same time, which is going to be particularly important because we have a lot of self-damage. Uh, on two, two corruption dealt to us. We unlock the virtue of purify, deal two purification to any target. On four, we unlock virtue of rerolling up to two die. And then at six, we unlock Twin Smash, deal three purification to an enemy two times. So if I were to do the, oh boy, I kind of want to reroll. Like I, I, I'm intending to do five damage to myself this turn because the starter die do five and four purification to the enemy for a total of nine. I get five uh, corruption to myself from the three and two corruption to myself. I can heal two of that with the area virtue. I can re-roll the negative starter die that I have in order to give myself one purification. So I'm only two HP down at the very end. And then I could even use a virtue to heal myself back up to full. I probably won't, but I could. Oh, this... This enemy actually has thorns, uh, so this is actually, I should d d d uh, slightly differently approach this, because now if I do two damage to myself and four damage to the enemy, they will also thorns back another damage to me. So I'm going to, the enemy is doing four corruption to themselves, that's fine. I'm going to reroll my negative, giving myself one heal there, and now I'm going to hit the enemy. And in doing so, I've unlocked the Twin Smash Purification Virtue. Uh, so let's now Light Shield myself. So this is three damage two times. This is two damage and this is two damage. So I have 10 damage. Twin Smash. Okay, and that got blocked by 
our light shield. Good. Yeah, turn one kill. It just requires me to yo-yo up and down my, cur uh, my corruption and purification a couple of times. Certainly not averse to doing that. Oh, new sides, new sides. Soothe Mind. Decrease up to two dice from your hand with any type of corrupt action to value one until the enemy's turn, and then ignore Doom. Interesting. So this is to save myself from the worst possible outcomes? I like it. There's also Wave. Apply six Wave to the enemy. Wave says when enemies with Wave are defeated, all targets receive X Purification. Oh, well, um... I haven't seen enough area of effect fights that would make Wave incredibly powerful just by itself. We'll have to see what we can get into in the future. There's also the Shark Payback here. Deal two purification to any target for each time you receive corruption during this battle. Not affected by Empower. This, however, does have a dissolve life side, lose a heart, unforgeable. Two self player corrupt actions and one AoE. Hmm. I mean, my base deck is very safe already. I don't think it makes sense to take Soothe Mind with any type of corrupt action. Yeah, so it's only corrupt action, so it wouldn't affect, you know, lose life, for instance. That's not a corrupt action. While it is a negative action that we would have to commit before the end of the turn, it's not a corrupt action unless it says corrupt at the top there. Same with the purify. Actually, I'll also take a moment to very quickly clarify a mechanic in the last episode, Enhance. Enhance says, turn a purify of value 1 into a purify of value 6. That does not allow me to, for instance, if this was a blue action that said wave one, that is not a purify action. That is a wave action. It's just worth noting because uh, these seem to be referred to relatively consistently in that fashion. This player corrupt is also a corrupt action. If it said player uh, purify, it would be as well. Area purify, similar. Um. Gosh, I kind of want to just take Shock Payback. Because, yeah. Yeah, 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 let's do it. Wave Crasher. If an enemy has Wave, trigger it using half of its Wave amount. As Purification rounded up, then decreases Wave by two. Neat. Shock Flux. Choose a die from your draw pool uh, to draw and roll. If it's empty, gets shuffled back in. This also deals five Corruption to us. Ooh. Indigo Soul. Prevents your next heart loss until the enemy's next turn. If this effect is triggered, fully fills your corruption meter and purification, with purification rather, and refreshes your virtues. I'm gonna do that. Ooh, I don't know if I should be going for a risky build, but I am, so... <laughs> I'll have to take that up with myself later. Outbreak. When at or below half of max corruption, apply two doom to the enemy, which means we'll be dealing a lot more damage to ourselves. Hmm. He's doing AoE corrupt, so I can prevent them from healing, as well as moving towards their over-corruption by hitting them with the starter die. And I believe I will. There you go, buddy. 10 HP off of you on the first turn. So we're going to get to Doom 
as soon as I play my next. So I'm going to play this first. Mm-hmm. Wait. Oh, it gets the doom value. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, to the AoE. A re unlock the reroll. This definitely could have been managed significantly better. But it's okay. It also could have gone worse. Yeah. That's why I wanted that side. It was. 12 purification, and we'd only been a couple of turns into the battle. I will need some... some safe sides. Calm. Deal 2 purification to yourself for each die in your hand. End your turn without discarding any of the dice from your hand. That's a really, really good way to just keep some resources for the next turn. Our maximum hand size in this game is 8. So, I believe we draw 4 a turn. So, I could save an entire hand, effectively. Oh, this is very appealing. Abyssal Shatter. Deal 45 purification to an enemy. Lose a heart. Oh! Oh, that's so sick. I, I have Indigo Soul in this deck. I'm gonna need mid pieces like Calm in order to give me the ability to hold on to an Indigo Soul or something like that before I want to draft an Abyssal Shatter. Soothe Mind just lowers the size of the corruption action. I just don't really want that. I will take Calm though. Inventive. Discard up to two dice from your hand. If you do, deal three purification to a random enemy X times where X is the amount of die discarded. Yeah, relative noodle. Shark Madness. 15 damage to any target. 3 corruption to all targets. Oh yeah, that's 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 really big. I I I can foresee probably the worst part about this is the interactions it will often have with your own sentinels. Because this is going to send a lot of them to the graveyard quite quickly. Apex Instinct. Gain 4 in power. At the end of your turn, decrease in power by 4. Oh, it's just... Heightens your... Purification value. That doesn't seem especially... Wait! No, increases dice purification value by X. Increases dice purification down to... Dice purification. So... Virtues are not dice for the sake of some things, but for the sake of other things, they are. I wonder if this would increase the damage of all of my abilities. Because that would make this make sense, right? If, if four in power made my last virtue the deal three damage two times, if that made that deal seven damage two times, then yeah, I can see the power of like having a large amount of empower on a single turn. Otherwise, I'm just going for Shark Madness though. Uh, forging, forging, forging. I kind of want to get a second Indigo Soul so I can start setting up for dumb stuff and also negate the negativity of Dissolve Life and stuff like that. It gives me another obvious reroll target and we do have rerolls consistently. So I could literally like forge one of the sides and then dupe it probably if I took the Star Shards into the Forge Shop. So let's do that. It's ready to any target. Oh! Wait, can I dupe? Dupe is 100! Holy hell! Okay. And this is Indigo Soul 4 prevents the next negative two heart losses? Oh, baby. Shield Boomerang is here too. Apply two light shields to any target. If played, this dice is then returned to your draw pool instead of being discarded. Uh, inventive, we've seen before, area purification. I am going to go with the, the Indigo Soul on our Indigo Soul. 
Confirm. And then I'm going to duplicate the Indigo Soul. <laughs> so that's a lot of safety we just put in the deck, which now means I get to go ham. <laughs> Woo! Uh, I can see how Wave might be useful in this fight. One corruption to all enemies, hide. One corruption to all enemies, hide. One corruption to me. So they're going to deal three corruption to me total. Until the end of the enemy's turn. Cool. So I can use Indigo Soul here to, to protect myself very effectively. Very effective, yeah. There we go. Next, X. Why does it say two on it despite it not having a value? And now it says X? I'm just trying to make sure that I, I don't play it in a situation where I'm about to take two hearts worth of damage and then uh, not... not get the outcome I was looking for. Give that two corruption myself. I forgot that I was going to be healing. What the heck? Deal one corruption to all enemies. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. So, this, this, this is a, a thing that I get with almost every game that I play. When an enemy uh, plays a card that says you, I don't know if it means the enemy or me. Um, so it it seems no matter what. Yeah, I can just rely on the text. Like self-corrupt will deal to themselves. Player corrupt deals to the player and area player corrupt would be to all of the players, minions, area enemy corrupt to all of the enemies. Got it. Well, I feel like my Indigo Soul was a little underutilized there. Let's start out by re-rolling Couple of these. Cool, cool, cool. So now I can go for the area purification. Two damage to you. One damage, one light shield there. One damage, one light shield to myself. That's two player corrupts. And yeah, you don't have the ability to deal three corrupt to me. So they can't make me lose a heart this turn. Oh, beautiful. Okay. I can finally trigger the Indigo Soul here. He has 13 to you, and then I do 3 in AoE. The Indigo Soul triggers and then wears off. The enemy is overcorrupted, which causes them to apply doom to themselves. Both enemies, in fact, are overcorrupted. All right, buddy. Best of luck. I uh, broke your friends. Do I have enough damage? 
damage here? Yes. No? No, I don't. Um, but that's okay, because I have the Ingo Soul, it doesn't really matter. There you go, I'm gonna play two Indigo Souls, one after the other, and then I'm gonna re-roll the enemy in order to heal myself back up. They're gonna do an AoE, and then they're going to die. This is why I wanted the Risky Dice Shark payback as soon as I got it. Deal two purification to the target for each time you've received corruption during this battle. It is now just 24. I'm leaning in as well as I can on the uh, damage oneself kind of build here. Marine Offering. Discard a die from your hand. If you do, apply it four way to the enemy with the least corruption. Okay, that's, that's a tool for saving yourself from some stuff. I can see that, I can see that. Empower increases your virtues purification as well for two turns. Okay, so it doesn't do it by default, as I'd previously assumed was possibly the case. Uh, however, it can do it with the Reef Song. Interesting. And then Invigorating Punch. Big purification to the enemy, some purification to ourselves. Also has the ability to just deal straight up corruption to ourselves. Invigorating Punch seems fun. Incon... I was about to say incontrovertible. No, it's incorruptible. Incorruptible to any target. Blocks all corruption until... No, I want to take corruption, thank you. Defensive Light for some light shielding. That's a really good way for me to have relatively low purification in my Purify Bar. However, to still protect myself in order to give myself the ability to start using Virtues quite quickly on the next turn. Geyser uppercut, deal two purification to enemy if the enemy has four wave. Okay, so now I can see enough other things that also inflict or interact rather with the mechanic of wave that, yeah, it's a lot more self-justified than it felt on the initial read of a keyword of like, what, am I going to be using this consistently? I could honestly take nothing here and I will. Convinced myself over the course of that. At the start of each battle, gain one Empower for every six Risky Dice you have in your dice pool. I have four already. Not bad. Every five turns, gain Incorruptible. That's actually huge. Uh, if you have 30 dice in your dice pool, increase Purification received by enemies uh, by one, and for every five additional dice, increase Purification received by enemies by one. Is this a good reason to just start drafting a ridiculous amount of dice? Like, this early? Because this, this isn't Empower. This would affect my Virtues. Which makes it a lot more impactful on this character who has three different Virtues. And the, the default one that is... Sorry, three different Virtues that deal Purification damage. And the default one that's available every turn is an area of effect. So it deals, you know, uh, extra Purification equal to the amount of enemies in the fight. Or even allies that I intend to heal with that. Oh, no, only to enemies. Okay, only to enemies. As well as the final of the virtues is hitting twice. So it gets to double dip on this bonus. Yeah, I'm actually going to go for it. A thick dice bag? Let's do it. Destroy a dice from your dice pool and then duplicate a dice from your dice pool. <laughs> Choose up to two risky die. I mean, this is kind of what I want right now, actually. I'm looking for ones that feel like they'll kill me! Abyssal Shadow, we got ya! Yeah, buddy! Yeah, I want ya. Uh, we also have Excruciatus. Deal six corruption to any target and one serenity to a random enemy. Increasing the amount of purification they take from things. And Void Seek. Choose a die from your discard to draw and roll. We're going with Abyssal Shatter here. Void Seek Cleave. Big giant purification nuke to the enemies, or big giant corruption to everyone. I don't actually love that. And then high tide, double and uh, double the wave on an enemy. If the enemy has no wave, apply three wave to that enemy. Okay, okay, I'm I'm seeing the value of wave a lot more. And then void seek. Choose a die from your discard to draw and roll. I'm gonna take void seek. 
Because I need to be taking as many cards as possible for the sake of the thing that I just did. But also, uh, with Void Seek, I might have the ability, when I've got an Indigo Soul in hand, to use the Void Seek to draw a Abyssal Shatter back out of the pile and then just play it. Oh, I'm... Buddy. <laughs> Sacrifice that heart. We find Star Blessings. While you have six corruption on your corruption meter, you deal two additional purification. That's really good because six corruption on our corruption meter does unlock the third purification. So this means that third purification would now be dealing four additional damage because it strikes twice. Uh, whenever you or a sentinel deal corruption to an enemy, you receive three purification. Um, illuminating Compass. Whenever you or a sentinel deal corruption to an enemy with at least two corruption, decrease all dice from your hand with any type of corrupt action to value one until the enemy's next turn. Yeah, I'm, I'm first thought, best thought. Let's go with the Xenith Ring. I'm going to try and have six HP missing at all times. Nice. Annoyingly, I can't deal enough self-damage with this hand to actually unlock the reroll in order to make the Indigo Soul worth a damn. I do want to get closer to triggering Vengeful Stab, though. Activate this enemy die every six times you deal Purification to it because that will give me a lot more control over yo-yoing my health up and down. Yeah, because this comes out and it has one Indigo Soul, but the Forged one doesn't have a... Uh, doesn't have a size. Oh, I could use this Risky Die this turn. I can take three damage, and then I can use a Virtue against the enemy, and then that'll trigger their ability and they'll take me out. So right now, the Zenith Ring is active. So I can hit you for, this should be five two times, five twice, there we go. The enemy strikes me back. Indigo Soul wears off. Everything refreshes. I should have used the, dang. Oops. I should have used my other virtues first because it does refresh all of the virtues as well. I mean, I don't really want the enemy to overcorrupt if I can avoid it. There's only one side better than both of these on each of these die. Okay, so you Vengeful Stab. Great, so I take three damage right now. And then I deal another two to you, right? And then you deal three damage to me, and I start my turn with another ten damage nuke to your face from the Zenith Ring. Yeah, the enemy overcorrupts, but that's fine. The overcorruption just provides them doom to make their further turns more potent. Hell yeah. Um. Really didn't want to just suddenly have to lose a heart there. do six to you and fully heal myself and now I need to damage myself oh actually no I don't <laughs> just gonna take the enemy out gonna try and figure out some way to damage myself enough in order to be able to reroll there again time to get a sentinel an epic die a black hole blessing recover all of our hearts oh colossus hand a big hand for big problems 
purify its corrupt, sorry, and purify, excuse me, purify and corrupt actions, there we go, on any type of its dice, have their values randomized between one and six. You've also got six size, it's pretty useful. Uh, deals one purification to a random enemy, two purification to a random enemy. Let's show these dice, see what that's, what's up. So the Colossus Hand, yeah, so it's literally just random what I get from that. Cool. Charge Pylon, choose a die from your hand to copy to roll. Seems pretty cool. Guardian gives us the ability to pop some light shield on ourselves. I think I'll go with the Charge Pylon. It's also just consistent damage to the enemies. And that consistent damage number is going to get higher. At about the same rate as Guardians does. An epic die. Maelstrom Impact. Deal three purification to an enemy. Deal two additional purification for each wave that enemy has. Not empowered by empower. Uh, <laughs> empower. Gain empower. Cleave. Just big. Big purification to all enemies. Yep. Hard to argue that one's not worth it. Shaded Talisman, neutral. Draw one additional die per turn. At the start of each battle, apply Obscure to all enemies. After the first turn of battle, you won't be able to see the overcorruption meter of enemies with Obscure. See, the thing is, could I entirely, you know, invalidate the negative side of this with forethought? Yes. But it also adds to the mental overhead that I need to keep track of at all times. And right now, I'm still learning. So I, I'm going to err a little away from that. Uh, draw an additional time per turn at the start of each battle. Apply a thorn to a random enemy. More ability to deal damage to myself. I may go for that. And uh, Silence Scarf. Draw one additional die per turn. At the start of each battle, gain one silenced. All of your virtues are disabled for X turns. No, I want all of my virtues available on turn one. I'm going to be taking the rose. All right. I kind of want to go for the board shop. I mean, I've added a lot more cards to the deck now, so I almost feel like I want to get another Indigo Soul in here somewhere. Let's go for the Event or Ambush. You see an old figure carrying a large backpack. It's an Elder Noctuan. He starts speaking. Hello, daring traveler. I see you have a long journey ahead of you. I think I can help you with my dice smithing skills. But I still need good quality materials to create something fantastic. If I accept his deal, I will destroy three non-starter die to gain an epic. Alternatively, I can propose a different deal. <clears throat> I can destroy one non-starter die in order to gain a hundred star shards. Three non-starter die. Do I have three non-starter? Because if I could get rid of three non-starter die from the deck, that might actually make the deck a lot better. Like if I got rid of Void Seek, Invigorating Punch, and Calm, I think we get our synergies that we've directly drafted into much more consistently, and an epic die. So Calm is one of them. Invigorating Punch is one of them, and I think it's Void Seek. That's what I was talking about! You won't regret it! 
The elder takes your dice you gave him, and with the materials from each of them, he creates a beautiful golden die. Hey, see, we get to upgrade the void seed. Now there's three of them on the side, as well as three uh, purifiers. Alternatively, an invigorating punch that's just big and good. There's precision as well. Choose a die face. I think precision's really good. I think it gives me the ability to more often fix hands. Because Void Seek chooses a card from discard to draw and roll, so I still need to have, you know, ultimately to roll into the Indigo Soul or to have Indigo Soul already out and then pull the Abyssal Shatter out of my deck. Whereas Precision gives me the, oh, but this, this is only, this only requires two specific die in my hand, whereas the Precision combo requires three of them, Precision, Indigo, and the Abyssal Shatter. That sells me. I'm going for the Void Seek. Told ya! <laughs> and then he disappears into the distance. Watch up. Ooh, duplication's expensive. Apply a full light shield to all targets. Neat. Marine Offering. Discard to die from your hand. If you do, apply 14 wave to the enemy with the least corruption. Neat. A copycat, some big rerolls. I mean, realistically, if I could add the reroll to something and then also duplicate that die, I might have. But here, it looks like I get more value out of destroy and duplicate. And the destroy should probably just be a minor shield to thin our deck down of that effect. And then, oh god, I'm removing so many dice! <laughs> that helmet is never gonna activate now! Oh, do I go for another Abyssal Shadow? I don't think so. I, I, I do think I go for another Indigo Soul. I just don't want to suddenly lose. Am I? That's ah. the worst case. An indigo soul is it still protects me from the enemy. So it seems still really good. At worst, it seems pretty good. I see that enemy has thorns. They intend to paralyze us as well as afflict us. One affliction. Uh, creatures with affliction receive X corruption at the end of their turn. All right, then. Let's see what we can get done here. I can take five health away from myself, and then if I deal one damage to the wicked archivist at any point there, I'll also deal another damage to myself, giving myself ac access to purification. I like it. Get up, Zenith Ring. So now if I use my starter die to re-roll the epic die, worst case I get a three back. Best case I get, you know, anything from my discard already. And I can also use this to reroll my charged pylon, who has a pretty poor result at the moment. Actually, yeah, <laughs> that's the best side they can roll for me, and this is almost the best side they can roll for me, so I, I don't want to change that. I mean, I just got the same two things back, so now I can just try it again. Choose a diving your head to copy and roll. There we go. Hey, I'm not gonna be the void seek. Now, these are all starters. I'm gonna bring back one of the shark blows. So, 
Three damage to an enemy, giving me access to the reroll. I will also reroll this again just for fun. Woohoo! And then I'm gonna bring back another shock blow. I mean, I can re unlock reroll right now, but that doesn't seem especially useful to me. I'm gonna end the turn without playing that final. Indigo Soul, prevent my next death. I'm gonna do a couple of actions with the things that I can just do for free. And then, I'm gonna kill you. Triggering my Indigo Soul. Refresh all of my Virtues. And take the enemy out. Yeah. <laughs> I like this build. Um, <laughs> Apex Instinct, uh, gain in power, draw a card, also gain in power, deal one purification to any target, unforgeable, interesting. Shark Flux for the astral calling of choosing a card from your draw pool to draw and roll. Right, Missile Shatter. Marine Offering, Wave Combo, there's also Surf. Apply three waves to an enemy and draw a die. In normal waves. Shark Overflow. Refresh your virtues, deal corruption to all targets. Refresh your virtues, deal corruption. I mean, I kind of do like that Shark Overflow there, and I am looking for more things that deal damage to me because I have so many Indigo Hearts in my deck. Uh, realistically, I do want my Sentinels to be better, but I don't have enough money to make my Sentinels better yet. An Epic Shot for Epic Die. Probably can't really afford any of them. Two Balance Die, Two Balance Die. How far past the plan of filling out my deck with a ridiculous amount of die am I? I could get six from here, another six from here. So I could get a total of 13 more before the end of the floor. Honestly, that just seems like it's going to give me such a minor impact compared to the possibility of just drawing Abyssal Shatter and the other in the same hand, and I should just give up on the value from the Dice Smith uh, helmet I thought I was going to get. That's okay, that happens sometimes. Oh, wait, this is this is not a Sentinel Shop. I thought this was a Sentinel Shop. I mean, there you go. <laughs> Cut one of my hearts, please. I need to recoup the value I lost on this uh, Dice Smith helmet I don't intend on using. At the end of your turn, gain one uh, light shield for each die in your hand. Hey. Uh, whenever an enemy with waves defeated, all the wave it had is passed to an enemy with the least corruption. That's huge. At the start of each battle, gain one in power. At the end of your turn, first turn, decrease in power by one. I mean, the only one of these that can really have any impact for us is the anvil, so I will take it. That makes the uh, safe die, the, the one that allows me to keep cards in my hand, that makes it a lot better. Blades of Pain. Whenever you reroll die, supply Doom for each die you rolled. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a dizzy dice put into my pool. I should try and deal a bunch of corruption to myself this turn. So I'm gonna deal one corruption to myself there. Then I'm going to do three to the enemy. And then two to the enemy. Then... The AoE damage. I'm probably going to end up leaving both of these in hand. Oh, probably not the risky die, actually. Let's re-roll. Do you have anything worse? No. Yeah, okay. This. Oh, never mind. They re-roll the exact same thing.
I can make them reroll one more time. Let's do that. You are kidding me. This is the side that they rolled both times that I've done that. Now I've got Doom. I've got a lot of Doom. The enemy is going to be dealing three damage to me, which is uh, too much, actually. It's too much damage, so I'm going to heal myself up before I end my turn. Oh no! I would have had a Lightsmith Anvil! Oh, that Lightsmith Anvil actually would have gotten me to sit on six instead, which would have been incredible for me. Man. 10,000 spoons and all you need is a fork, eh? Here's my indigo soul. Okay, I'm gonna hit the enemy for two in order to trigger my reroll. You absolute crumb bum. My guy here is just getting another Dizzy Hex immediately. Those are really bad for me, actually. They're like not good. They're not okay. I'm getting so much Doom by rerolling as well, which is also not good. For what it's worth, it's not. It's not what I want to be doing. I'll tell you that much. Woohoo! Never mind. Get my Indigo Soul. to health, I see, eh? It's just this die wants to deal 8 damage to me, which is uh, gonna be too much. But I don't have to play it. It's just I'm gonna have to heal the enemy as well as overcorrupt them to give them one doom in order to avoid this. And that's not how I wanted that to go down. Ooh, just destroying that hex die. I love that. This is refresh and eight corruption to all targets. Which is kind of tautological right now because I'm gonna refresh from the the death to indigo soul anyway. So refreshing again doesn't really help me. Five damage to the enemy, nine damage to myself. There goes my indigo soul. Unlocks the ability to. Nuke the enemy a bunch, though, and that'll take him out. Quick strike, draw, purify, plus plus, just big purify. Yeah. Deal one purification to an enemy for each die you have in your dice pool that contains shark in the name. Shark blow, shark blow, shark blow, shark blow, four. Shark Payback, five. Shark Madness, six. Shark Overflow, seven. So seven? That's not bad. I do feel almost compelled to still skip for a bit and, and keep my pull low. Soothe Mind Reduction. Decrease one die from any target with any type of corrupt action to value one until the end of the enemy's next turn. No. Forge area purify. Change it and die from your hand into area purify for the rest of the No. I don't think I need that.
Whenever you or a Sentinel deal corruption to an enemy with at least two corruption, decrease all dice from your hand with any type of corrupt action to value one until the enemy's next turn and then ignore Doom. Eh, maybe. For every eight balanced dice you play, draw a safe or risky. How many balanced do I have? I have <laughs> one balanced die, I think. Yeah, that's not bad. The start of each battle, apply three safeguard to all enemies. At the start of your turn, apply three, uh, sorry, X light shield to the creature, then decrease safeguard by one. That blocks corruption on enemies? Which I a lot of the time do want to do. Yeah. Sounds good to me. It's not, I want to do corruption to the enemies, sorry. It's that I want to block corruption to the enemies. Uh, random event or ambush. Can I have money, please? Whoa! You've discovered an ancient Aquarian forge that was used in the past by dice smiths. Oddly, this forge is on. There are some working tools you can use. I can either purify a side, uh, or forge a side, purify 12, forge a serenity 1, or forge draw 2. I think the shark payback is the right side for modifying with this. Give a draw two to... I obviously can't forge over the top of the dissolved life, but I can do it over the top of the player corrupt dealing four to one cell. Confirm. Let's just confirm my big area of effect is three at a maximum. So as long as I have more health than that, we're good. Protostar. <clears throat> Whenever it receives a corruption, apply one empower to this creature. Increase corruption received by one. So I can't do it that many times. However, I do eventually make a pretty powerful protostar there. Soothing Remora has the ability to lower the value of the dice. No. Keep calm for smash smash. No. Random purification. Also no. Okay. Sentinel upgrade. I mean, I could upgrade my charged pylon once. It gets slightly larger. Its auto turret has size 2 after that. Actually, I am... No, I didn't win! I didn't win! Wait, no. I can come back! Oh, I'm so grateful for that. A lot of games with relatively similar mechanics to this put you in a position where if you leave a store, they just go, fine, you've left that store, you've offended the shopkeeper, and now you're out of the store and you're never allowed to go back. Whereas, like, come on. Like, I I, I just, I might have clicked the wrong button or I might have something else that I've thought. I, I have no new additional information. Let me revisit the shop. Thank you for letting me revisit the shop. So I'm looking for a new Sentinel. I'm going to go for the... No, I'm not going to go for the Protostar. So what, what I was about to say is at the end of this level, I'm going to get a new Sentinel anyway, and that new Sentinel is going to be relatively high level. So I think it's more impactful for me to upgrade the Sentinel I already have. Would love to upgrade it a second time there, though. I can only tell you that Risky Die is going to be more interesting for us. Shark Surge. Draw a bunch, but huge corruption to ourselves. Oh! Yes, 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 yes! That would be so good in the open hand. <laughs> Twin smash. Deal seven purification to an enemy. Two times. Gracious sense. Ten corruption to any target. Gain power. Big light shields. Less interested in these ones. I'm going to be taking a skip on this. Yeah. 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 I had to. Every 12 risky dice you play, apply incorruptible to all enemies. 
So that prevents them from getting corruption until the start of my next turn. Okay, that's pretty good. That saves me from playing you know, bad corruption. Whenever you were a Sentinel deal corruption to an enemy, you receive three purification. No, nope, I'm, I'm gonna go for the audacious card. Cause like, uh, I've got eight risky die in the deck. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I really like this. Fabricate Sentinels and Agony. So Fabricate Sentinels says, at the end of the enemy's turn, fabricate two Corrupted Sentinels. It can't have more than two Corrupted Sentinels in battle. Agony, at the end of its turn, apply one Doom to this creature. So this is, uh, yeah, the, the enemy is gonna start ramping up quite quickly here. Oh! We, we've got the God Opening Hand. Um, The God Opening Hand is I draw two die Hilarious. <laughs> uh, I draw two die. And then I do die. Uh, no, no, I, I draw two and I get myself down to activation of Zenith Ring at the same time. The enemy does have thorns, so I can't just bop them with the virtue as much as I might otherwise like. Here, I'll reroll both these Ingo Souls and see if I can actually... Oh! Hello, Indigo Souls. Well, I'll be... I mean, all of these, using any of these will try and refresh all of my virtues pretty much. Right? If I use the two, everything explodes and reverts. If I use the virtue of AoE, I heal by two and then I take one damage. So I re-unlock this virtue. Oh, actually that's a lot better. Nope, that's not how that worked. Alas. I need to take a little more damage. One there. Oh, that'll deal two damage to me, actually. Eh, that's fine, I guess. So I get taken out. And I still have another Risky Die and another Indigo Soul. Another Indigo Soul there. Also, for what it's worth, I did test there. Uh, the, the side on my... where are we? This side, this side that says prevents your next negative two heart losses, only prevents one. I'm glad to have confirmed that this early. 43 damage to the enemy. I break my own GD heart. Most of the enemy's HP is gone. <clears throat> and I've also taken a ridiculous amount of corruption damage. So when I draw my, uh, the, the corruption effect, things are gonna be good. When the Corrupted Sentinel's active, Corrupted Assembler will be hidden. And when it's active, it'll have one thick skin. The thick skin decreases purification received by one. All right then. Let's riskily draw some die here. Two to die from my discard to draw and reroll. Um, actually, I know what I'm going to do with that. So first, I will use that damage AOE. 
and then I'm going to use the epic die to pull back the cleave AoE so that I can take out the sentinels. So their effect is now gone. Okay, let's re-roll my own Indigo Soul. I would really like to have... Hey, access to an extra, uh, extra life here. Really low is the threat level of this. Got him. Sayonara, Assembler. Adapted Corlia. Ooh, drawing specific cards and putting specific cards back in the draw pool. That's quite useful. Astrolabe. Discard up to two die from the hand. I don't really want to discard it from hand. And Guardian for Light Shields. I think I should go for the Adapted Corio. Frenzy. You will deal dull purification and double corruption next turn. I will deal, not I will suffer. So my numbers are doubled for those. Honestly, I think that's probably sick as hell. Like all blessing, at the start of each, oh, at the start of each battle, gain three in power. From now on, you only have one heart. No. Draw an additional die per battle. At the start of each battle, apply one decay to a random enemy. The start of its turn increases over corruption by one. That's worth it for me. Increases purification received by enemies by one. You deal one less purification to you and to sentinels. No, I need to be able to heal myself back up. And also drawing more cards, die, uh, gives me significantly better odds in actually drawing useful combos consistently in my hand. Uh, so the upgrade cost for a Sentinel going from level 2 to level 3 is 200, which means I would not have the ability to go to the Sentinel shop and utilize it in that effect. I probably can't dupe another die as well. I'd be able to do some sick forge actions though. Mm, broken shrine. Yeah, broken shrine too good. I might just, you know, only get 20 gems from turning both of these down, though. Oh, so there is just a multiplier. Eridanian Wrath. I got, I, I got, got. Eridanian Wrath. Uh, deal two purification to an enemy. Empower increases this action's purification value three times. Neat. Big wave value. Just take the money there. Calm. Deal two purification to yourself. For each die in your hand, end your turn without discarding any dice from your hand. I actually do really want that. So I draw six per turn now, so I could use this with only two dice left in my hand. And if I did, I would heal myself by four, and I would also give myself two light shield. That's actually like a pretty defensible position. What do you think? Broken Shrine? What do you think is about to happen? That's right. Sacrifice a heart to get a star blessing. Every time you, every eight times you deal purification to enemies, gain one boost. Okay, so if I use an area purifying the enemy has, th there's three enemies, right? Do I deal three instances of purification for the sake of this or one? 
While you have one heart, you deal two additional pure vacation. Uh, can I look at the map from here? I can. Cool. Okay, there's not another option to give up. Oh, there is another option to give up another heart. Oh! <laughs> I, I literally could try and use the Azimuth ring. Have the Azimuth and the Zenith rings. Whenever you were a set- I mean... Oh, jeez, howdy. The, the Cosmic Sandals are really quite good for us, I can only imagine. But this is going to make the final fight so much better. <sighs> Outbreak. Uh, when below or equal to half max corruption, they will have doom applied to them. Got it. Oh, hello. Okay. Next time you play is returned to your draw pool instead of being discarded. Cool, cool, cool. Choose a type in your head to copy and roll. Got it. Okay, choosing a die from my hand to copy and roll, I think, should be the Shark Surge. It's not exactly what I wanted, in that I don't want it, and it's nothing I've ever wanted. But apart from that... The one corruption to all targets and then silenced. All my virtues are disabled. I, I don't want that. Half of their die silence us. Oh no. I think I should probably get started on that enemy, frankly. Three corruption to any target. If I deal that to the main body of Solarius here, I'll give myself the ability to re-roll my risky dice. So I will. Sick and slick. So I'm going to deal one purification to an enemy, and then the next that I play this turn will be rebounded. That is my rebounding indigo dice there. Perfect. And now I can draw some cards and die. Well, I mean, especially if those are the cards I draw. Let's see if I can re-roll you out of silencing me, because I would really like not to be silenced. Never mind, you're still gonna do it. How dare you. That's three corruption to themselves, two corruption to me, one corruption to me. I would like to die by the end of the turn, if that's possible at all. I've got double purification and corruption next turn. Every 12 risky dice I play, I only have one more risky dice in hand at the moment. I appear to have given that enemy more doom. So now five damage will be dealt to me. Okay, I think I can. I think I can play with that. Yeah. Three AOE kills me. <clears throat> Indigo so brings me back. Although I am now silenced as well. So I can't use my virtues this turn. But I am doing double damage. That's gotta be worth something. Calm and Indigo Soul are both available to be rolled here, and they will be. Yes! So much better than the other side. 
Um, I also have the ability to refresh my virtues. So while I am silenced this turn, refresh says, ignore all effects that disable your virtues until the next time you play them. And that would give me the ability to reroll another side. What do you mean all of my virtues are disabled until the end of my turn? Silence is not doing anything. What? I'm just using my virtues. I'm quite confused by this. I'm gonna deal five damage to an enemy and then six damage to myself here, or 10 and six. I prefer not to be stunned. Oh, never mind, I'm still gonna be stunned. You want to keep two cards in hand here. None of those are really the one I was looking for. But that's okay. Still think it'll be enough. Perfect. That'll send me all the way down to six. I don't believe any of the enemy effects are negative for me right now, so I can just throw out a bunch of effects with my Zenith Ring active. Beautiful. Soothe Mind Wave and Forge Purify. Nope. Inventive. Nope. Shark Rapture. Deal one purification to an enemy X times, where X is the amount of corruption in your corruption meter. <laughs> Wait a second. Okay, so if I have the Xanus Ring active and then I throw this at an enemy, it deals uh, 3 by 6, 18. Minimum 18. That's pretty sick, actually. And if I have the Azimuth Ring active, it's another 6. 24. It gets huge effect out of... The, the only problem is, because it hits that many times, it's going to cause Nebula Rose to destroy me. And if I ever use this against the boss, I will die. So I'm going to skip for that exact same reason. Gain Soothe Mind 1 Virtue in your leftmost empty slot of your Corruption Meter. In the empty slot. Yeah, I can see that being valuable. At the start of each battle, gain Infinity Disoriented. Nope. Uh, at the start of each battle, gain 1 in power. At the end of its first turn, lose that in power. I don't necessarily want to do that that much. I'm just going to have an extra... Wait, what? That's not where I thought that was going to go. I thought it was going to go one to... Well, wait, it can't go one to the left, because one to the left would have killed... Is the space that kills us. I understand now. I want to upgrade both these guys. Costs 200 to upgrade each. There's the Apex Instincts we've seen before. Geyser Uppercut. 
or wave contributions. Wow, there's a lot of wave. Okay, I should drop into wave next time. Um, but these are all safe die. They're too safe for me. If the enemy has at least four wave, draw a die and then decrease the wave. Oh, draw effects in the same wave build. Beautiful. Reef Song, Apex Instinct, and another Super Mind. That's money, if I've ever seen it. I don't need more money before I go to the Sentinel shop in order to upgrade both of the Sentinels that I have. So I'm going to go for the Ambush. Or a random event, I mean. Whoops. Uh, you see a tall statue with a dice smith... Sorry, a dice smith mask on. It's a strong Eridanian, raising a hammer in one hand and a die in the other. As you approach the statue, you see a place to pray and an inscription. The truly selfless will find great luck. So I can pray for help, gain four random non-skippable die with a 10% chance of being a epic die, or I can donate, spending 100 chance to increase the chance of a die being an epic die by 10% when I pray for the help. I don't want more die, so I'm going to be turning all of that down, sadly. Yes. Yes. Well, okay, so I can upgrade my current ones. Or I could just replace them with level 3s for the same cost. Okay, so the Adapted Courier, you definitely want an upgrade. I like you, you need to stay. Charged to Pylon, yeah, you're also really good, and you get a second charged copycat side. Alternatively, there's a Guardian or Colossus. No. When corruption is received from others, corruption source receives two purification. Nope, I will be going with a upgrade on each of my Sentinels as they currently stand. Beautiful. All well that ends well. Let's go for another hard battle, because of course. This guy! Woo! 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 Are you the Dice Smith from the previous event? You look a lot like him. And those are hammers. Alrighty tighty. What are we getting done here? Uh, 12 to the enemy and then 3 corruption AOE. And then I can do five to the end. Oh no, I can't do it like that because the enemy has thorns. So five to the enemy and then I do another one to the enemy. And now we're here on this virtue. Let's start off by re-rolling my allies. Choose from my discard to draw and re-roll. I don't especially want to do that right now. That has to be to an enemy. Got it. Any corrupt action can I can lower its impact. And next time I play a risky die, incorruptible will be dealt to an enemy, blocking all corruption they receive until the start of the next turn, which is really relevant here. <sighs> Let's reroll these. Oh, copy. I'm just gonna lower the impact there and then on this one as well. Let's draw from the discard another cleave and then I'm going to elect to copy that. Hmm. 
damage the enemy again, and then with the Azimuth Ring, sorry, the Zenith Ring active, I'll heal myself significantly by four. Take another damage to the enemy's thorn, though. Cool. That said, I only need to deal 26 damage to the enemy each turn. Past that point, it's kind of wasted. So I'm gonna stop. Turn over. You've decayed me! I can't re-roll dice until the end of my turn. Oh, baby. I mean, I'm gonna re-roll the- No, I gotta re-roll the- It's fine, I have the ability to prevent the life loss from it, but jeez. What a mean combo. Uh, I should do every one of these that I care about. Cool, cool. Let's lose a heart now. Jokes! Indigo Souls got me. And now the enemy's doing no damage. They will silence us though, which I am not entirely certain will take effect. The enemy's incorruptible, so I'm not even gonna affect them there. Can't use that reroll at all. Yeah, I'm not sure why silence didn't take effect last time. It's very handy to me that it didn't, though. I'm hardly keen to complain. Oh, this is the combo I wanted to see! It's not super relevant in this turn, but it is the combo I was looking for. Da -da 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 -da. I used Frenzy last turn, so BOOM! 74 damage the enemy! Uh, lovely. Uh, you're about to put two dizzy hex die in my pool. I'm gonna re-roll that on your behalf, because uh, you didn't want that die, did you? Stinky die. Okay, cool, you, you do. You clearly do, because you still have it. Uh, there's very little impact out of doing almost anything right now. I just need to continue taking turns. And the enemy will not be eventually. Whoops! <laughs> I forgot that I'm dealing double corruption. So just knock to the enemy there. Uh, knock to my ally rather there. Oops. Bring back a frenzy and see if I get it. I do! Woo! Let's bring back the frenzy again and see if I get it again. If I do that, do I do quadruple damage next turn, three times damage next turn, or do I just do double damage for the next two turns? Who knows? Unfortunately, I never will, as that did not land on the side it would have required. Yes, yes, yes. On chip two. Wow. That was a very aggressively bad hand for us. Three corruption to a random target. Three corruption to any target. I do have uh, the virtue frenzy. Uh, one purification to any target. The next time you play is return to your draw pool instead of cool. So I'm going to start lowering the values of these. Seemed the right thing to do. Um, 
enemies only doing two damage at this point. So, that's corruption winning target. That has to be to me. And then I'm just going to heal myself off the back of that because it doesn't make any sense to prevent the enemy's next one damage. Especially when I'm about to light shield. Bye bye. Shock strike. Mm. Timeless. Choose up to three non-mandatory actions from your hand, not to be discarded at the end of the turn. If you do, three purification. It's similar to the one I had before, but less keen on it. Draw two risky die. Uh, that's pretty good. Four corruption on any target. Worst case. I mean, I do really like... Uh, I will take draw risky. Quick strike. Wave. We've seen those before. Sunken curse. Gain three in power. At the end of your turn, gain one doom and decrease in power by one. That one's not for me. Whenever you were a sentinel, deal corruption to enemy, apply to wave. No, each eight starter dice you play? I do still have seven starter dice in this deck. Every three turns, apply two light shield to all targets. Frankly, I really do like the idea of being able to slow down the enemies providing uh, corruption to themselves. So, on board. Hmm. I could start destroying more dice from my pool, actually. Or Jerry Purify. Tidal Jet. Four purification to an enemy, if it has at least four wave, additionally deals four purification three times, then decreases wave by one. Wow. Empower, and then forge purify, don't want any of them. Empower, another abyssal shatter? I honestly think I have enough abyssal shatters. Anchor push. Player gets light shield, enemy gets damage. Nope, I'm gonna take the money on that one as well. And then I'm gonna move here to destroy a die, and I'll be destroying one of the basics, probably like a minor shield. Because the shark blows are really good. Uh, but also the minor shields do help my health a lot. But also, I can help my health a lot. Yeah, get out of here, minor shield. And then in the next space, I'm going to go to a forge shop, and I'm probably gonna do another removal on another one of those. What's this symbol? Oh, applying corruptible. Cool. Yep. Gonna be destroying. And it's gonna be another minor shield. Oh, baby, this deck is so good. <laughs> Do you need to ask? Do you need to ask? Alright. <laughs> Uh, every eight star today you play- all oh, right, we've seen both of those very recently. Every five turns, gain incorruptible. Blocks all the corruption until the start of your next turn. Nope! I want to take corruption most of the time when I'm taking corruption. Apprentice card. Wait, another star blessing? What? Why? What did I do? <laughs> Well, I'll take it. Every three times you deal one purification, apply one light shield to random. I do still like that. Whenever an enemy gets overcorrupted, apply one serenity to the enemy, increase purification received by one. Ooh. Uh, at the start of each battle, refresh your virtues. Yeah. Woo, 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 woo. Turn one's so good for us right now. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna be trying to trash my deck with all these decay. I don't like that. Uh, 
Let's start out with a re-roll. I want to... Ooh, actually, hang on. Copy and roll. So maybe I should copy and roll something first. Like, draw risky. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to re-roll both of those. One of them did hit draw. I will draw. Pretty much exactly what I was looking for, buddy. Damage time! Uh, okay. So it's worth noting, I've got another Indigo Soul in this hand. Which maybe I should consider re-rolling as well. At some point. Lower the cost of re-rolling my virtues as well. Um, I will... I, I do want that Indigo Soul to go back into my deck as well, so... Let's have that go back into the draw pile. And then Void Seek would also be another really good thing to hit on the reroll. So now I focus on individual damage instances so that I can get up. Mm-hmm. Now it's reroll time on this and this. That's unfortunate. Neither of them hit what I wanted. <sighs> I have a nervousness in my body that if I play the risky die, it will trigger thorns killing me, taking the heart, and then the effect lose a heart will take place. From what I've seen so far in the game, it tends to total all of your, uh, all of the outputs of an effect and then activate them. So if I threw this at you, I would lose a health and a heart. L my hope is that losing that heart would then trigger Indigo Soul and then the health loss would come from my next health, but I can't confirm that. And because I can't confirm that, there's just the possibility I die if I try and make that plan instead. So I'm going to avoid just dying. Okay, so it deals the damage to myself. First. It was very much worth doing that then. Give myself another Indigo Heart. Four Corruption to the player. Hell yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to see. Four Corruption to the player. I deal another two to you. And now I'm about to lose my Indigo Soul. Uh, with this... Asmus ring takes me down. Good, good. Now I can deal two directly to the enemy. Another three a couple times to the enemy. Two directly to the enemy. I can do big AoE heal, and then I can refresh all of the virtues as well as deal one corruption to all targets on the field, giving myself the ability to deal another ten to you, four, and then the AoE heal. Virtuous Warrior. Play at least 20 Virtues in a single turn. <laughs> oh, this is fun. This is fun. Uh, Alright, yeah, my turn. Here you go. The enemy is providing ruin to themselves right now. They're not really damaging me. This Risky Die already does! The Shark Payback, two purification for uh, to any target for each time you've received corruption during this battle. It already does 52 purification. 
Okay. Uh, I'm going to do the risky draw. Giving myself a bunch of damage there. My hand is full, oh no! And now, risky. I killed the decaying star, and then my indigo soul broke, and I got all of my revertues back. Corruption purified. Hell yeah. Australia's heart has been reached. Unbeatable. Win a run without losing hearts during battle. Sacrificing a heart. A... Sacrificing a heart at shrouds doesn't count as heart loss. Woo! <laughs> oh, that was so successful. I'm really, really pleased about that. All right. Let's get our first level up on Solarius. The... Oh, right. Okay, they, they start runs with the Star Telescope, the Black Hole Telescope, and two dice. I do like the idea of starting a run with a couple things to get you off the ground, because it makes it a lot easier to then try and build in directions. Whereas here, I just saw Indigo Soul very early, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go entirely in that direction and just hope there is enough uh, hay in that bale to support me as I leap off of this stack. Another level up. Unlocking some specifics. Dice action. Uh, this is a dice action vendetta. Vendetta, whenever it receives corruption, sorry, you apply vendetta to a target, and then whenever that receives corruption, apply X empowered that creature, and also increase corruption received by X. Got it, that's quite aggressive. Vengeful Idol, Solarius. At the start of each battle, gain one Vendetta and apply two Hidden to all enemies. And then the Black Hole Blessing of Unstable Bubble. You deal one additional Purification. At the start of each battle, apply one Death Bomb to a random enemy. Death Bomb. When enemies with Death Bomb are defeated, all targets receive X Corruption. One Corruption? That's a... That's such a minimal cost. Ooh. I like it. We've now unlocked the new oracle, Hevelius, the Ancient Warden. Do we have enough for a third level here? No is the answer to that one. We've unlocked the difficulty level one, anomaly level one. Be oh, still my beating heart. Anomaly level one, increase non-bosses max corruption. Anomaly level effects Tainted Reef, Astropolis gru uh, Ruins, and Ground Zero. Anomaly level also stacks. One out of 11 anomaly levels have been unlocked. All right. Well, I mean, I, I do kind of want to just click the new run button. Wait, what? That just launches you immediately into a new run with that character? That's really unfortunate, because I'm, I'm not going to be continuing that run. I hope that doesn't penalize me in any fashion, because at the start of the next episode, I'd really like to try out Hevelius, the Ancient Warden. I'm just, just gonna put him on screen here for a second as a little bit of a teaser trailer before I hit this button and say that my name is from Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Astraea, Six-Sided Oracles. In the top left of the screen, you can see my series playlist for all of my content on this game, past, present, and future. YouTube recommendation is down below and streaming past the names of the people so supporting the Republic on patreon.com slash Plays at above the thank tier. And a special thanks this episode to Dyla. Hopefully you'll have been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you all 